So all the methods we looked at before are generic conversion methods. They're good for converting between any two arbitrary bases, as long as you know how to do the arithmetic in one of them. But there's also another popular way to do base conversions, but it's limited to a specific case. As you may be able to guess from the details I've got up here, this method is going to require that one base be the exponent of another base. So I can use this method to convert between binary and hexadecimal, because hexadecimal is 2 to the fourth. I can also use this method to convert between binary and octal, because octal is 2 to the third. So this only works when one base is the exponent of another, so I can't use this to convert between binary and decimal, or even octal and hexadecimal. As octal is base 8, the next exponent would be base 64. So while this is still kind of a general method, it has a very specific requirement that really limits the use to a handful of cases. We'll be especially interested in binary to octal and binary to hexadecimal. But we're not going to try using this for anything else, just because one of the bases will get very large very quickly. So the way this works is if I want to convert a number from, say, binary to hexadecimal, I'm going to be looking for groups of this size in binary, and each one of those groups is going to translate to one digit in hexadecimal. Similarly, if I want to convert between binary and octal, I'm going to be looking for groups of size 3 in my binary number. And if I want to go the other direction, I'm just going to do the reverse. I'm going to find one digit in, say, base 16, and that will translate to, into four digits in base 2. Or one digit in base 8 will translate into three digits in base 2. This method is really easy to apply, but it will require memorization. You'll essentially have to memorize a table that tells you what these bits in base 2 translate to in base 16. As an example, if I take a binary number and I want to translate this into base 8 and then base 16, in base 8, I'm going to look for groups of 3. So here's 3 bits, here's 3 bits, and well, there's 3 bits there. I'm always going to start from the right-hand side and work my way to the left. So I know that 0, 1, 1 binary is equivalent to the number 3 in octal. I know that the number 1, 1, 0 in binary is equivalent to 6 in octal, so I have 4 plus 2. And I know that the number 0, 1, 0 is equivalent to 4 in octal. Now, if I, do, I can do the same thing for hexadecimal, but this time I'm going to be looking at blocks of 4. So I have 0, 0, 1, 1, which is 3 in hexadecimal, and then I have 1, 0, 1, 1, so I have 8 plus 2 plus 1, which would be 11 in decimal, or B in hexadecimal. So this strategy is very quick and effective, but as I said, it's going to require memorizing the various translations. As you get more practice with binary numbers, this method will pretty much come naturally. But when you're first getting started, it can be a little hard to use.